Hello everybody, John here, and today onto the garage, we've got Secrets of the XK8. And we're gonna have a chat about waste seals. Hi everyone, if you're new to the channel, then To The Garage is a channel for people who enjoy playing around in their garage. We're heavily biased towards Jaguars and the XK8 in particular, but cover all sorts of adventures, projects and fun on different vehicles and different things. And the Secrets of the XK8 series is now a 100 strong series of videos that covers all of the little quite interesting facts and features on the XK8 and gives you top tips about how to fix things and why things go wrong. Today's short video we're going to cover a little bit about waste seals and the reason for hitting that is I'm starting to get a few comments from people who are eagle-eyed and noticing that the waste seals on my car are no longer standard. So the waste seal is this item it's a trim piece that's clipped onto the top blade of the door and rear quarter panel and it holds a rubber wiper that scrapes uh, debris and water and snow off the window when you retract it back down into the door it also creates a seal that stops the water from getting inside the door it stops drafts and it just finishes the tops of the doors off. And I'm getting a few comments from people saying, oh, your, yours look very shiny, John. They're not normal. No, I've now got stainless steel waste seals on my car. And I'm very happy with those. They're not standard. and They are not the same shape even as the originals, but I think they look rather good. I'm not going to cover off in detail how they came about for various reasons in this video, but I do want to talk about the original equipment waste seals. And here they are. This is the driver's door. And this is the piece that fits on the rear quarter. And the reason that these things start to look bad and eventually fail is one of two items. Some cars, particularly those in really hot areas of the world, the rubber here will degrade to the point where it cracks up and no longer creates a seal between the glass and the door. In some countries, it'll start to go green as the rubber denatures and it becomes more porous and it takes on algae and all sorts of things and the flocking this sort of soft velvety back degrades and again collects debris it starts to scratch your windows so that's one of the sort of failure modes that means people want to get rid of or change these things the big achilles heel of the waste seals on our cars beyond most others is they're neither polished aluminium, polished stainless steel, nor are they a self-colored plastic or anything like that. They're this rather odd combination of aluminium that's been overpainted. And this section, this middle section is aluminium and the rest of the device is rubber and a few other little bits and pieces in there as well. And soon as the paint gets disturbed on these and you get a little chink in it, even if it's just at an edge, 
then you start to get aluminium corrosion, which lifts the paint off. And over time, they become more and more tatty, probably starting with these sorts of scabs and blisters. Now, these can be overpainted. You can very carefully rub down the aluminium with uh, emery cloth or wet and dry. Uh, you could use a Dremel tool with a little wire brush to help you get rid of some of the scabby bits. And you could refinish them in the appropriate paint. And this colour is called Dorchester Grey. And if you go to a decent paint supplier with a VIN number, they'll probably give you the right colour. Or take a piece of trim and have it colour matched and get yourself a can made up. So you can dress these. It does involve a lot of masking or you've got to separate the metal from the rubber which is a messy and difficult task and reassembling it is even more messy and difficult. The other way that these fail, and I've got to say mine are not in bad condition when you consider they're 25 years old, many other owners will be having a lot worse problems than this, is the corrosion builds up on the backside of the metal part and starts to push away the rubber. Oops. And if you look down mine, you can see this sort of wavy line rather than a nice even gap. That's due to the buildup of corrosion starting to lift the rubber away and distort it. And over time, again, that's going to stop it sealing properly, cosmetically ruin it. And even if you can repaint this, once the rubber's been distorted for long enough, it won't pull back into shape very well. So that's probably the biggest failure mode. Also, once they start to corrode on the backs, they can actually corrode through and uh, you've got a hole in it. Um, yeah, 25 years, like my car is, seems to be the limit which they last in nice condition. The front edge, this edge, is just a cut through section. And that is because that is covered on the car because it's pushed underneath the mirror plinth, which has got a rubber gasket behind it. So the fact that that is a rough cut doesn't matter. And that allows you to see the end section of this. And you can see all the white looking material is corrosion. And it started to distort this and push that tongue away from the metal. And that's what's happening when you look down this and see the wrinkles. It's pushing the rubber away. The section is actually quite complex. Here's the wiper blade, the bit that touches your glass. It's undercut here so that it can flex. It goes over the top of the metal trim piece and then fits inside the metal trim piece and is originally at least clipped into place by a little barb here but the corrosion pushes that away and that's what we got and you can see if I just keep moving this all the white debris coming out so these things fail on a regular basis this is the rear piece <coughs> Oops, this end piece is quite complex. You've got the bottom blade, which is part of the main extrusion, top blade, part of the main extrusion, and this end piece, which joins them together, and that's been vulcanized on, and that is tucked over the metal. This short piece shows the corrosion even better. So that's the piece that touches against the, sorry, this is the piece that touches against the door, the bottom, this is the top. And look at the gap that's appeared there compared to elsewhere. And when I pull this back, corrosion. So that is a failure mode on our cars 
but is difficult to deal with. And these are incredibly expensive. The original equipment manufacturer no longer makes them, which is to be expected. Car manufacturers have to maintain the supply of spare parts for 10 years after the end of production. And we are well beyond that with our cars. So there is no obligation for anybody to carry them. And the barrier for entry for somebody to remanufacture as new in the original format is quite high financially. Hence I've gone a non-standard route and it is a different profile, it is a different shape and it does fit, but I think quite neat. And I'll share more information on what I've done and how I've done it and where I got my bits and pieces from another time. Uh, there is a reason I'm not sharing it now, which I'm not going to go into, but please don't think that the reason I'm not sharing it now is I'm setting up and tooling up to make and sell these. I'm not. So don't, don't imagine that this is an advert. It's not. The top items, the sort of integrated gutter and trim around the tops of the windows are equally susceptible to this problem, but even more of a challenge to replace, particularly if you have a coupe on a convertible. Obviously this is very short and then there is nothing. On a coupe that is a very long curved piece and it has similar issues. So you've got this combination of rubber parts and metal parts and you can see on mine down here the corrosion that's coming up underneath this rubberized area and it's pushing itself away. So all of this Dorchester grey trim work is a bit of a challenge. Here's the top of my windscreen and again you can see corrosion starting to push the little rubber seal lip out. So moving forward I think there's some big opportunities for anybody who's going to Invest the money, effort, and a lot of time involved in remanufacturing these sorts of items. But I think it will be the indicator of the X100 genuinely coming of age. There's plenty of people offering parts, remanufactured parts, remade parts, better parts, upgraded parts for our cars. And you can get some of the um, body panels, for instance. Uh, corrosion down here is a, a real common thing. Mine has some, and mine's a restored car. Um, but you can buy panels to weld in. Um, so they've reached that stage. But they're just on the cusp of, are people going to invest the money for something that's cosmetic, that won't stop the cars running? They've got to know that there's a market out there that's going to stay around for the next 20 years in order to tool up and invest in that. So I'm damn sure that our cars will achieve genuine classic status. I'm not talking about the massive increases in money that you see with E-types because that has not really got that much interest to me. Contrary to that, I like to be able to buy one of these <laughs> so prices can stay as low as they like. It's not an investment, it's, it's my baby. But we need them to, to achieve that genuine classic status, that long-term classic status, so that people will remanufacture parts like the window surrounds and the waste seals. It's a new month. We're now in March 2022, so let's look at the latest fabulous picture on the to the garage 2022 calendar and this beauty is larry allingham's 2003 xkr coupe which he calls the little car um that's because he's obviously got a big jack <laughs> at cern abbey in the uk beautiful shot um it's got this sort of toy car look or effect where um, something's been pulled in the camera, I think, rather than post-edit. Beautiful image. It's, uh, it's not just a depth of field focus effect. Very nice. 
showing off black paintwork beautifully on Larry's car. I like the way that he's uh, superimposed some TTG logos where his number plates are. Uh, I think that looks really cool on black car. Each image in the calendar has a little bit about um, XK8 that's kind of connected with the picture. And on Larry's, we're talking about the XKR spats or real wheel arch extensions. You may have these stickers on your XK8 XKR. Jaguar security system. What does that mean? Well, it's different for different areas of the world. We've covered previously that um, cars have alarm systems and in some territories, including the UK, we have the intelligent sounder, meaning that even if you cut the supply to the horn, which is your siren or alert, um, or even cut the battery. A British car or one fitted with an intelligent sounder should carry on alarming. Uh, British cars also have an anti-jacking sensor. So if the car is locked with the remote control and then somebody jacks it up, it should alarm because there is a level sensor in the boot. Um, on a convertible, it's just above where the pump is for the hood. But the extra security element that is a little bit of a secret of the XK8 is micro dots. There are thousands of little dots. Think of these as glitter in solution. And these dots are about a quarter of a mil in diameter and every one is printed with a unique number. And again, British cars had them as standard from new at least on the Mark 1 uh, XK8. And a vial of these was put in an airbrush and squirted in various areas of the car, such that it is literally impossible to delete them all. There's too many. And somebody could go through the car parts, high value car parts, and find these micro dots and prove which vehicle it came from. Um, I'm not privy currently, but maybe somebody can work this out or as works in the factory can share where all those micro dots were sprayed but I am aware that the batteries and the area just behind the battery were generally sprayed with them and on some cars you can see little white dots on the battery bracket that will be the micro dots and um, the bulkhead area before the engine is fitted has uh, an area that's been been sprayed and some of the major components under the bonnet have a, a bit of a dose. But because they've been changed over years, they're probably gone. If anybody knows where the micro dots are applied, then that'd be great, or has access to the equipment to read them on their car and wants to send in an image of some of the micro dots, that would be really, really cool. If you're enjoying our channel, then don't forget to subscribe and click the little bell icon so you get notifications of new videos. And please give us a thumbs up or thumbs down and you can share the videos. And below the video is always the area where you can comment and get involved with the chat.